This is the third part in my lecture on Module 8 of the General Science Book from Apologia. We're going to continue now by looking at two assumptions that are made when constructing the geological column. The first assumption is that each layer of rock represents a period in Earth's past. And this period would generally be millions of years. Now this assumption is also using the idea of the principle of superposition, that when artifacts or fossils are found in rock or earth that is layered, that the deeper layers hold the older artifacts. The second assumption that is made in making the geological column is that index fossils are accurate indicators of which time period the rock was formed. So let's look at these two assumptions and ask, what are the problems with these assumptions? <coughs> Looking at assumption number one, each layer of rock represents a period in Earth's past. What's the problem with assuming that each layer represents millions of years? Well, Mount St. Helens and its eruption in 1980 provides good evidence for the fact that this assumption does not necessarily have to be true. The eruption of Mount St. Helens showed that stratified rock can be laid down in a matter of hours, not years or millions of years. About 15 feet of stratified rock was laid down in less than five hours. The Uniformitarian says that normally it takes millions of years for this to happen. But what we see from Mount St. Helens is that is not necessarily true. It doesn't have to take millions of years to get all these layers of stratified rock. How about assumption number two? What are the problems with that? Well, assumption two says that index fossils are accurate indicators of which time period the rock was formed. Well, first of all, we know that these index fossils rely heavily on radiometric dating, and we've learned that this, this, this method of dating is simply not reliable, especially for things that are older than a few thousand years. Also, index fossils require that the creature is extinct. Now, is that a problem if we find that they aren't? Well, let's look at a couple of examples of erroneous index fossils. The first one is the Walimi pine tree. Up until 1994, finding a Walimi fossil was considered evidence that you were looking at rock from the Jurassic period, which is about 145 to 200 million years old. So if you found a fossil of this particular pine tree, then you could assume that the rock that you were looking at was 145 to 200 million years old. Well, in 1994, they found living Walimi pine trees in Australia. So this destroys the belief that finding this fossil means that you're looking at Jurassic rock. If you found this fossil, you might be looking at rock that was a few hundred years old, not 200 million years old. Another example of an erroneous index fossil is that of the coelacanth fish, shown here. Originally, this was considered evidence of rock that was from the Cretaceous to Devonian period. So if you found a fossil of this fish, then you were looking at rock that was this old. Well, in 1939, these fish were found alive in the waters between Africa and Madagascar. If the geological column is correct, then why don't we have any fossils of this creature for the last 65 million years? How could they have avoided fossilization for 65 million years? This really casts doubt on the accuracy of the geological column. Well, from these two assumptions, the uniformitarians form two conclusions. So based on these two assumptions, 
they form two conclusions. First, they conclude that you can construct <coughs> you can construct a theoretical geological column which shows life forms gradually getting more and more complex. And that geological column is shown here. Remember, however, that this whole thing is based on about 5% of the entire fossil record because 95% of the fossils are clams and other hard-shelled creatures. So there's just a really small portion of it that aren't clams or hard shells and those fossils are what are forming this whole geological column. Now, if you're going to accept that this geological column is correct, if you choose to accept that, then it logically, very logically, leads to the next conclusion. And that is that all life on this earth was, has one or a few common ancestors that existed a long time ago. This is the basis for the theory of evolution. Now, how did evolution occur? Well, differences just kept occurring between parents and offspring, and those just kept piling up until eventually the offspring had a significant change that could be noticed. Remember, this geological column is the foundation for the theory of evolution. Without it, there really is no basis for believing in evolution. This is the end of part three.